G'day all and welcome back to another live stream here at the Australian Reptile Park. I know the kids have all kind of gone back to school. We had a really, really busy school holidays. It's been a great time for us and for all of our amazing animals. And I hope you guys are studying hard at school and learning lots. Uh, Jakey's backing me up today. Well, I'm Dan, obviously, but I've got Jake backing me up. I've also got Ambrose in the corner there and our amazing uh, marketing girl, Caitlin, on camera filming. Always does such an incredible job. Uh, so Jake's gonna swim the crocodile a little bit. I'm gonna give him a little bit of food uh, and then I'll tell you a little bit about crocs, but mainly talk about our big, beautiful crocodile, Elvis. Now, people don't like, when people come to the park, they've got a few favorite animals and forget about the koalas, but they love Hugo, the tortoise, Kraken, the Komodo dragon, but right on the top of that pile would be our big saltwater crocodile. Now, we're very lucky to spend our days working with saltwater crocs as a kid. You grow up and the first reptile you ever get is like a blue tongue and then a few small snakes and then you start working in zoos and you just can't wait to work with big giant salties. But it's always one of the last animals that you would ever start working with. And that's because whilst you know, we've got a great relationship and a very respectful relationship, uh, as much as I'd like to think me and Elvis are the best of friends, it's definitely not the case. If I made a mistake and fell in the pond with Elvis, no doubt in my mind he would definitely kill me. If Jake fell in the pond, oh, he would definitely kill Jake as well. So it's a bit of a love-hate relationship. You see, I love him, but he hates us. And he doesn't just hate me or Jake, he hates anyone who comes inside this enclosure, because this, or his exhibit, I should say, this is his home, this is his territory, this is his domain. And he doesn't really like people stepping into his domain too much at all. He kind of cops that we're here at times, but don't get me wrong, the little bits of food that we're feeding off the sticks today, that's not really what he's after. See, in the wild, a crocodile as big as Elvis, he's not going to bother chasing small fish and birds around. What he's looking for is something from the size of an adult kangaroo all the way up to a water buffalo to eat. Now, me and Jake, whilst we don't fit right in the middle of that category, much more to the kangaroo side of things, um, we do fit in there somewhere, which means he would much prefer to have a big hold of us and eat as much food off us as we could, uh, rather than chasing around these tiny little, bit of, little bits of food that we got feeding off the stick. Now what Elvis is doing right now, he's actually following Jake really, really well. Jake's tapping the water. He's sending out these vibrations through the water and Elvis is basically tracking them. And that's similar to how they might locate food out in the wild. You could imagine you're in the top end of Australia, you're a kangaroo, you're really thirsty, you need to go drink, you take steps down to the water's edge, you stick your head in, you start to drink. That's exactly what the crocodile is waiting for. They're sitting at the edge of the water, waiting for that kangaroo, feral pig, horse, whatever, to come down, stick its head in, take a big drink, then the crocodile will strike out and grab it. Now, Caitlin is gonna pass over the camera to Jake the snake, and he's gonna get the camera nice and close for you all at home. Oh, Elvis has moved a bit, Jake. Uh, can we see how he goes today? Not the largest piece of food on the planet, but we'll see if we can get him motivated anyway. So I'm sending out more vibrations, he'll start to come out, he'll bring his feet forward, hopefully wind up his tail a little bit, and then he'll strike, we'll see. Not doing much yet, he's opened his eyes a little bit, just waiting for that tail to go. Hopefully grab it. Oh, didn't grab it that time. Go on. Okay, that time he got it. And Jake will get the camera in nice and close. So you heard that big snap. Uh, that really is the an example of the strongest bite force of any animal on the planet uh, coming together. Now, a little bit of story about Elvis. He's Four and a half metres long, weighs around 460 kilograms. He's a pretty big croc. He's by no means the largest crocodile on the planet or anything like that. They can get substantially larger than that. He's been living here for about 11 years and keeping me, Jake Ambrose, on our toes every single day. Uh, he's a very intelligent animal. He knows the different keepers. He constantly monitors our behaviour. Uh, and yeah, he can be a pretty intimidating animal to work with at times. Now the reason he lives here at the park and not out in the wild was he was actually a wild croc originally. 
Now, big wild crocodiles, if they start to hang around people, obviously people don't like that too much. So he was sent to a croc farm. Now, when he got to the croc farm, he was meant to make lots of babies, but he didn't do a very good job of that. He was pretty, uh, pretty hopeless with the ladies, you see. Uh, so the croc farm didn't have much use for a big giant salty like Elvis. So he found his forever home here at the reptile park. And we hope that he'll be living here for a very, very long time. He's approximately 55 years of age. And he might live to his 100, who knows? Hopefully we can be that lucky. All right, we might try and bring him out a little bit. He's really going out on a weird angle there. He's had a look though, which is good. He's starting to walk out. And you'll really get an appreciation for how big he is when he's out of the water. But you can also see once he's out of the water how hard it is for him to bring that whole body up and out. He's got short little stumpy legs, huge big round belly, and a big snap there, which is good. He's starting to motor a little bit now. Yeah, you got to take it, mate. Oh, jeez. Here we go. Okay. Oh, I've got to get that back. There we go. A little bit of a wrestle there with him as well. Oh, and a nice burp to finish it off. Now he started to move out pretty quickly there, but this is the best shot of a crocodile you're ever going to see. Look at those teeth. Now saltwater crocodiles typically have between 64 and 72 teeth. Elvis has every single one of his. But you'll also see when his mouth's open there, his tongue is not coming out. That's because basically they have a backwards facing tongue. So the back of the tongue, it's a special valve there called a palatal valve, which actually can close off to the throat which means when they're underwater, they keep that closed, they can have their mouth open and no water's gonna go down into their throat. It's when they eat, they'll actually lift their head above the water, open that valve and then swallow their food. Whoa. But to give you a bit of perspective of how big this crocodile is, look at that. He makes me look tiny and he looks like he's about to move, so I'm going back this way. <laughs> And he realised that I was standing between him and the water and he thought that might be his chance. But look at this, look how slow he is when he's out on land. That's not to discredit him at all. That's because he's got to carry far too much weight, far too much weight on land. Where they're dangerous is in the water. So if I push Jake in right now and he went swimming, that would be a real struggle for Jake. He wouldn't be able to escape him. But also too, if you ever stand too close to the water's edge. Now obviously, me and Jake, we will do that because we're watching the crocodile's behaviour. But if you go to the top end of Australia, you should never stand as close as what we were today. We might take a few steps back, Jakey. All right, so by far, was a, probably wasn't my best feed ever. Um, but oh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I know these guys probably did as well. Say hello to all the lovely people visiting the park today. Yep, they're all giving you a big wave. Or doing the social distancing thing as well, which is great. Uh, for all you people at home, make sure you come out and visit the Reptile Park. It's a great way to spend a day out. I hope to see you all here very, very soon. If you come on a Wednesday, we'll probably be feeding Elvis. Uh, have a lovely afternoon, and we'll see you at the Reptile Park soon. Hooroo, see you later. Thank you.